Well, it's the week before Seder and there is a lot to do. It's actually less than a week. I think we've got four days, five days. I have to set, finish setting the table, cook all the food, kosher my kitchen and get it all ready for the Pesach holiday and about a million other things. So I'm very thankful to have you here motivating me. I'm wishing you a very, very happy Chag Sameach. We need to prepare our I've got a baby chattering in the background and we've got to prepare our home physically for the Jewish holiday of Passover, as well as our minds spiritually for this big day. So there's a lot to do. This past week was my son's family Shabbat at his preschool, which means that like the families get to go in and it's which is so special. And they have a Judaica gift shop there. And I was waiting for my other son to be done with school and basically, I had to go in. So I thought before jumping into all the cleaning and prep and everything that has to be done, we'll start with some fun stuff and I'll just show you some cute things I got for the Seder table. This is a little like jumping froggy guy. That's so cute. It actually even says happy Passover on the back. By the way, if you have a synagogue near you that has a gift shop or um, you know, like a Jewish store nearby, sometimes they have these little things that you can't find on Amazon or whatnot. Um, then there's this Right Light Kids Seder plate. My son is obsessed with Seder plates. It's like a little puzzle to him. Anyway, so he'll love that. All of those are like $2. Had this plagues mask thing so you can like wear the different plagues. Kind of a bizarre concept, but the kids seem to love it. So we got those for the Seder. This, the whole bunch of fun stuff. And um, I got it, guys. <laughs> This is the Kidcraft Passover set. It is no longer being made anymore. Kidcraft, why, why? Um, so this is probably like one of the last ones left and I just had to get it. I just had to. Okay, Zachary did not want to play nicely on the floor while I filmed that video, did you? He, I have this like little play area for him in the family room, but he was not interested. Anyway, so okay, and then the other thing I wanted to show you guys <laughs> that I got not want to sit down, huh? is um, I already had this mezuzah, but I did not have a scroll for it. And um, so I got the scroll. I thought I would take it out and show you. It's written on parchment paper. I don't know if you can tell. Handwritten, and it's the Shema and Be'ahavta prayers. And then on the back, it says Shaddai, which is like a name for God. So. Basically, I'm going to roll that up and put it in the mezuzah and then I can finally hang that up. That has nothing to do with Passover, but just been on my to-do list for a long time. And then the last thing I got was this Badikat Chametz kit. So basically the night before Passover, it's traditional to go all around the house with your candle lit and your feather and um, get all the last crumbs of chametz. And people actually plant chametz around the house specifically for this purpose. Um, but you get all the last crumbs and then you burn them. And it's very exciting. And then one last thing before we get into all the things that have to be done. Quick reminder, if you need a Haggadah, mine is available on Etsy. It's just a digital download, so you're not too late. You can download it minutes before the Seder and be good to go. Print it out at home, however many copies you need. What is that? <laughs> um, so yeah, the link will be down below in the description box. Okay, let's get into it. Pesach, here we go. Up first today, I am hanging my Happy Passover banner. I got this from Amazon. I think it was about $10 or so. I have one for a soup coat now, Hanukkah. Who knows, I'm really stocking up on my banners. But I just think it's nice, that's the tell. Explains what holiday it is. So just putting that up. I just use tape first to get it exactly where I want and then a little push pin in the wall and it hardly makes a mark. Next up, I am folding all these pyramids they are just like table decorations really um i think originally they came as like a game and you were supposed to put stuff inside i think it was from days united a few years ago i honestly cannot remember but i thought they looked so nice on the table and gave a nod to the exodus story and that sort of thing so yeah i like this one Okay, so me and Max are going to be making some kosher jello shots. I already made ones for the adults using 
Manischewitz. I'll actually show you guys how that came out. Now I feel like I'm taller than you. Oh, you are taller than me. <laughs> so this is what they look like when they're done. They're just a jello shot. You basically just make jello according to the packet directions, and then you can add in wine or grape juice to give it or that flavor. Or you could eat poop. Or you could eat poop. Um, and you just add about two thirds of a cup of oh. the wine or juice. So I made the adult ones, and now we're gonna make the kids ones. So these are the kosher jello packets. They're from Geffen Foods. I actually got these on Amazon, if you're looking. No. Or if you have a kosher what other, grocery store. Are these for cat? To eat at Passover too? Yes, yeah, so uh, my uh, dear little son Max is going to help me count out 20 well, cups. Can you count out 20 and then you got to separate them like that. One. Okay, can you separate them? Three. While he does that, I'm going to empty the packet in here Five. and I'm boiling two cups of water. Okay, so while Max is doing the cups, I just added about two thirds a cup of the grape juice. I just eyed it, but also because I'm using this um, measuring, large measuring cup, I could kind of see like how much it was going up, but I just eyeballed it. And now all I have to do is pour the jello into the molds, into the little cup molds, and then refrigerate it for two hours. I'll be good to go. I'm actually just gonna leave it in the fridge for the next few days. So jello shots are done. They are definitely a lighter color with the juice than with the wine. But that's a good thing because we don't want to get them confused on Seder night. So I'm going to put these in the fridge and then I'll put them in a Tupperware once they're set. And then they'll be all ready for pizza. Just something a fun and lighthearted. Reedy, what are you doing? I guess and Reed wants to help me with the next Passover and project, and project, huh? Have only one and now for the crystal, taking down all our crystal glasses, and I'm just giving them a wipe with a wet cloth just because they get a little dusty. They probably were not used since Passover last year, and we were only hosting a little bit of family then, so some of them have not been used for quite some time. Yeah, what That's else? the matzo, that's the salt water, mm -hmm. those are the wines, and that's one of the grape juices, and, I'm, and that's another one of the grape juices. Mm. Max has been working very hard drawing lots and lots of Seder plates for us as well as all the other things that go on the table which is very helpful so that we remember what goes on the table. Seder hoops. And why do we bowls. put salt water on our Seder table? To remember the tears. Whose tears? The Jews. Why were they crying? Because Pharaoh told them to, uh, to do hard work. That's right. I'm impressed with this knowledge. It's from preschool mostly, not for me. Um, so yeah, they're learning so much. It's amazing. Okay, so I just dropped my older son off at my in-laws, and my younger son and my husband are actually going to the Capitals game, the hockey game. So it's just me and the baby, and we got a lot to do. But I picked up matzo balls and matzo ball soup. So my mother-in-law made the soup and the matzo balls. They're frozen now, so I'm just gonna put them in the freezer if, if I can find room. We actually have a fridge and freezer in, my, in our basement. I'm not sure if I ever showed that to you. So they might go in there. And then I borrowed a folding table from them. And that's the next big step is to put the table out and then I'm gonna spend the day, spend the day setting the table. Hopefully it doesn't take me the whole day. and on to a building and then setting the table. Um, this took way longer than it looks in this um, sped up footage, <laughs> but I got there in the end. It actually wasn't that complicated. I just didn't really know what I was doing. Um, and then, so I had a white cloth. I actually have two white cloths and I really debated taking off the floral one and putting on two white ones so they matched 
um, better, but then I just was like, no, no, Mary, just don't, just keep it going. So I decided to add a runner onto the second table, which tied into the colors of the first table, and I felt like it just worked. I don't know, you'll see at the end. You can let me know what you think if I should have just had it done to white tablecloths, but sometimes white is too plain, and I just love my new one from Target this year, so. It is what it is. I also used paper plates for the second table, um, but I did use the crystal glasses and other glassware and then um, gold forks and knives. So I think in the end it all came together fine. I do have another set of china, but it really doesn't match the first set of china. So it's a whole thing. I have to figure out, do I need a set of plates for 20 people <laughs> i probably do um or maybe i should just get more like plain white dishes but anyways again it's fine i accept it is what it is and it looks good So basically everything was just on the table already in piles and the last step for me is just putting it where it needs to go i find it helps to just first put everything on the table and make sure i have enough of everything and then later on in the week I actually set the table but that way I know ahead of time like if I don't have enough plates or whatnot also if you spy in the corner there Zach he's just playing on the floor he's already rolling over on his tummy so cute okay so I finished basically finished setting the table like everyone's got a plate <laughs> and a hagada and there's definitely some stuff I need to like fiddle around a little bit with but what really helps me at this point is I get my paper and pen and what I'm going to do is first I'm going to write out a like not a real place card but just everyone's name who's coming and then I'm going to put there where I want them to sit I uh, actually I think I'm going to do my matzo place cards that I usually do depending on if I have the time where I write everyone's name on a piece of matzo if I don't have time for that I might think of something else so you'll see later in this video what I end up doing. But that's number one. And then, cause I have to figure out like where the kids are sitting and put the kids plates, that kind of thing. And then I also am going to make little, like cut out pieces of paper for things like harosa, bitter herbs, salt water, things where I want them like to go out on the table and I wanna make sure I have enough and like where it's all gonna go. And that way on the day of, it'll be much easier. Um, Speaking of the day up, I might try and vlog, which I know is going to be crazy because um, my other son's family Shabbat is this Friday. So I'm basically going to be at school with the kids on Friday during the day and then they'll all be home like right before Seder. So it'll definitely be chaotic, but I feel like I could squeeze in a few clips here and there. So let me know if you guys are interested in seeing that and then maybe I'll make it a two day vlog and like show a little bit of the second Seder, which I feel like you guys don't normally see and how we're setting up for that. So yeah, let me know. Okay, so time to write. By the way, I'm writing like Haroset twice because I wanna make sure that each table has their own bowl of Haroset so it's not like having to be passed around, you know what I mean? And then I'll also do like a plate for the eggs, um, lots of balls, like everything. next day I think since I picked up the camera by the way I feel like you always hear my dog tiptoeing in the back of all my videos because he follows me from room to room he's literally literally attached to me all day all day <laughs> anyways that was an aside um so I want to show you guys what the table looks like it's not 100% done yet but I need to stop filming this video at some point <laughs> so I keep thinking like I'm not sure when the last clip will be because I want to get it posted before Passover. But that is why I think I'll do some sort of Passover vlog so you can see the final details. Um, but I wanted to show you how the table came out. Just a reminder, we don't have the actual fresh flowers yet. And I haven't done the place cards right now. They're just still the names that I wrote. Because it just depends how much time I have, like how fancy that they'll be. Okay, so here it is. I used the blue table runner to tie in to the main table's tablecloth. I think it looks okay, I hope. There's the Haggadahs and the little pyramids. It's simple, but I think once the flowers are on it, it'll look really beautiful. And then I have to do the Seder plate and yeah, but that's the, that's the overview so far. So on my to-do list now, and I honestly, I'm a little bit frozen. I don't know where to start. I have to do the Seder plate, the Haroset, 
the <laughs> boiled eggs. I need to um, switch over my pantry and <laughs> but I'm just gonna keep going. Just keep filming, keep going. Let's get this done. Now I'm making our hero set for the Seder. I think I used like three pounds of apples. I don't even know. But for two Seders and all the people coming, people eat a lot of hero set. I mean, it's delicious. So basically for my recipe, all you do, I have a video linked. I'll link it below. But you just chop apples in the food processor. And then I just add some chopped nuts. I actually don't add them if I'm making it ahead of time because the nuts get a bit soggy. So I like adding them just like the day before even or the same day, but not days before like with I do with the apples. So basically I'm just chopping up all the apples and then I add some sweet kiddish wine and leave that in the refrigerator and then the Hiroset's good to go. And now I'm just getting my pantry in order. I'll kind of explain it in a second, but basically just getting all the hummets into its own shells and all the Passover food into its own shelf so we know what's what. But I don't bother like covering things up or anything because I know what's what. That's my basic pantry my basic my basic pantry Passover switch up. So I had been storing all our Passover foods up here where I couldn't really get to them. So I just took this shelf, which is normally our snack shelf, emptied it out. I didn't need to like wipe it or anything because it's just this wire stuff. Um, and then just put all our Passover foods here and then some more cedar foods down here. And after Passover, oh sorry, after the Seders, I'll do another grocery shop like just for the week. I don't have enough room in my refrigerator to like have food for next week and the Seders, you know, because we're having like, you know, 20 people and then 10 people for Seder night. So right now my fridge is just dedicated to that. So after the Seders, I'll do another shop for like our weekly groceries. So that's why you don't see too much down here. It's mostly just the Seder food. And then next week I'll figure out like what we're going to eat during the week. But yes, so now it's all here. And then I'm going to just shuffle this stuff, um, clean it out. These are just our snack bins and then put them here for now. It's mostly empty anyways. And then after Passover, that's all our Costco stuff. We'll probably head back to Costco for another restock. Okay, every time I do one little thing, I'm like, oh yeah, I gotta tell, I gotta tell the vlog about it. Okay, so for the Afikomen, lighting. Um, usually, or some, all families do it differently. Sometimes there's one Afikomen that's hit and all the kids try and find that one and the winner gets a prize. What we do is there's one for each kid and what we do is we put them in just little plastic bags so there's not crumbs all over the house from wherever they're hidden. So right now I'm just making sure I have enough plastic bags for each kid for each night just set and ready to go so that when it's time for whoever's gonna hide the Afi Komen to hide it, they're not like stressed and they know what to do. I'm even considering pre-hiding but I guess that wouldn't be traditional. But maybe pre-hide some and then hide the real one. Something to think about. And the other thing I just picked up today is more Passover like presents and Afi Komen present stuff. Number one being this Passover memory game. Um, this is by Right Light. I'll try and link it on Amazon if it's around. My mom sent these Passover sticker books for the kids. And I also found these um, DIY Seder plates. There's four in a box and the kids like color the insert and then put it in the plastic tray. So I bought two of them um, and they're gonna be for our second night. Our second night is more kids. We'll actually be outnumbered <laughs> as adults. Um, so I wanted to have like more fun kids stuff around for the second night. Plus it's like they've already sat through the first night. So, you know, just make it easier for them and more fun. Okay, so I've been chatting with you guys a little bit about the difference between the first Seder and second Seder. So obviously it depends like who you're hosting, where you're going, that kind of thing. Like it's not that they have to be different. It just so happens that for us, the second Seder is gonna be probably more like kid focused focused or there'll be a lot more little kids running around so if you hear my printer going that is because I decided to print off a bunch of Passover coloring sheets I have a few different designs um, you just google Passover coloring sheets and a bunch of different stuff will come up so I'm gonna put those out I got some new crayons and I'm gonna put the DIY Seder plates I showed you guys and the Passover stickers so that is all for second night so it's going to be like coloring and fun that kind of thing and then for first night before all the guests come i'm going to give my boys 
because they're really the only like little kids that are going to be there. This Passover memory game and the Kidcraft kid craft set like right before everyone comes over so they'll be kind of distracted and they can like play and not hopefully not and hopefully they won't be too overwhelmed by like all the adults coming in the house and everything so that's my plan time for the boiled eggs i actually really researched online this time how to make the perfect boiled egg that peels easily and i think i got it you basically put them in cold water bring them to a rolling boil close make sure the lid's closed Keep it on medium high heat for eight minutes and then put them in ice water and then peel them five minutes later that's the that's the quick version but when you have to peel a lot of eggs and boil a lot of eggs it helps to have it down to a science um, but for seder i give uh usually one egg per person sometimes half an egg just depending on how many i can boil dining room um so i finished the hard boiled eggs i did the harosa i do need to add walnuts to it when i get some more walnuts <laughs> but um basically i finished my prep kind of <laughs> i finished as much prep as i can get done for now everything else is kind of have to gonna be um day of and day before because uh i just I'm gonna like cook things you know Thursday and Friday and that's it and then just like putting things out on the table and things like that so like I've mentioned a hundred million times I'm gonna try and vlog any bits that I can uh, for first night and second night I'll just show you whatever I can grab and kind of how we celebrate probably not the actual satyrs but all the prep and stuff and everything and so <laughs> I'm excited. I'm looking forward to it. I'm. I feel like I'm. I, I'm. I'm there. You know. I'm not there, but I'm there. You know I me. Mean? Um. Sorry. I'm so tired. But also, um, I do have my cleaning lady is coming tomorrow. So that's going to be a huge, huge help. Obviously, I'm not going to film with her. Um. But that will be the bulk of like the deep cleaning that has to be done. So she's going to help me with all of that. Um. And then Thursday and Friday, I'll just be doing prep. Um, so I'll just show you the current state of things right now. Table's ready to go, just needs, you know, the final things, nicer name tags, fresh flowers, that sort of thing. Again, day of kind of stuff. The kitchen is, it's okay. <laughs> it's prepped for a deep clean. And, um, the playroom I showed in the last video already got deep cleaned, so that's ready to go. And the family room and everything. All the other rooms are like, all the toys are put away. Everything's just ready for a clean. So that is the state of things. I'll show you. Uh, so that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching this prep with me. I'm so excited. And I'll see you the next one. Bye.